What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panyuta for tutorials.eu slash Unity. Welcome to your new career and your career as a game developer will start now because in this video you're going to get started building your first game and the game that we're going to build is going to be a codeless game which works without code obviously and we're going to look deeper into the different parts of Unity building everything from scratch and this will enable you to understand how Unity generally works without having to focus on the code side of things, which we are going to cover later on in a different game. But for now, we really want to focus on the Unity editor. So in this video, we're going to get started by building the map, so to speak, with a bunch of walls. And this will be your first step on your journey to becoming a game developer. And if you haven't installed Unity yet, definitely check out our other YouTube videos that we have for that part where you learn how to install Unity, understanding the user interface and understanding game objects and components. So now let's get started with the content. But before we do that, please hit the like button and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And don't forget to check out the entire playlist and not just this video. So let's get started. In this video, we'll start with the development of our codeless game. And the first step will be to set up our project. Therefore, let's open up Unity Hub and then create a new project. So this will be a 3D project once again. And I'm going to call this one codeless game. And click create. Then once the project is loaded, let's go over to our Simple scene here and create a new 3D object. And here I'm going to create a cube like so. For now, we can leave the cube's name as it is. We can then make sure that it is reset. So the position is 0, 0, 0. So you can scroll in a little bit to see the cube a little better. You can see that this is going to be the cube. As you see, in this case, it really doesn't look like a cube. It looks more like a square. That depends, of course, on the angle at which you are looking at the object. So now that we have our cube, let's take this opportunity to look at the components inside our cube. We already learned about the transform component, which includes the exact position of our game object inside of our active scene and the collider, which takes care of making our object collide with other objects that also have colliders. So basically to interact with our world. But what are the other objects for? What is a mesh filter or a mesh renderer? And why can I change the size of the collider? Quick pause. The video that you're currently watching is just a fraction of the entire course that I have to offer. So I built this complete Unity Masterclass course in which you are going to learn how to build real games and how to build them from scratch. So you're going to learn how to build a platformer game, how to build a Space Invaders clone, how to build a Flute Ninjas clone and optimize it for mobile and export it for mobile as well. How to build a first person shooter game and finally how to build a tycoon game similar to Adventurist, which is an endless game. So if you want to become a real game developer, definitely check out the course. You can find the link in the description and you will get the course with a huge discount. So don't hesitate as you will not only get the course, but you will also get it in a structured manner with all of the code as well as a Q&A section with a five star support. So get the course now. I hope to see you there. Well, starting with the collider, remember how the collider was visible in our scene view. So here you can see that this is this green line that you see here on each corner. This indicates where our sphere collider is and you can change it. So if you go here and for example, you change the X coordinate to two, for example, you can see that now the collider will be bigger than the visible object. While the collider will have a width of two, the cube itself will just have a width of one. So that is something how you could, for example, trick the player into running into walls that are not really visible. So that's something you have to be very careful with. You shouldn't really do that. Of course, you can change the collider size in all directions. You can even change the center of the collider. So for example, if I move down the collider, you can see that now the collider is underneath the actual object. And that is happening by me changing the Y coordinate of the collider, for example. 
you could have made this collider even smaller. So let's say you wanted the collider to be smaller than the actual object. That is something you can do also. So let's say you go to 0 0.5 for all directions, then you would have a collider, which is a lot smaller than a visual object. Okay, so we could run inside of this object and we would only hit a wall, so to speak, or we would hit the actual physics of the object once we are inside of the object itself, which is also something that you should try to avoid, except your game is exactly designed so that it should confuse the player by <laughs> having walls that aren't there where they are supposed to be. Now, you could, of course, also assign different types of colliders. So here we have a box collider, but we could have added different colliders. So here, if you go to physics, you can see that there is a capsule collider, a sphere collider. Let's add the sphere collider. And let's make the sphere collider a little bigger. So let's add a radius of one, for example. Now you can see that our cube will have a sphere collider. So physically, it will behave like a sphere, even though appearance-wise, it is a cube. So that is something that you should try to avoid, except you really want it to be the case. So now let me actually get rid of the sphere collider because now I added this extra component, but I don't need it. So you can click on those three dots here and then click on remove component in order to get rid of components. So as I said, you should only do that or change the size if you actually want to trick the player, for example, or make it as part of your physics, or if the collider that was added by default is not the correct collider, or it doesn't really suit the physics of the appearance that you want it to have. So in our game, we'll actually use this in order to show how we could change the difficulty of the game with some tricks that actually are used in the industry. So definitely stay tuned for that. For now, we're going to use the colliders, however, and by the way, you can edit the collider by clicking this icon here as well. And then you can drag the individual sides of the collider also. So you don't have to play around with the size. You can see then the center and size are changed for you if you just drag the surfaces around. So you can drag the different surfaces to different directions and change your collider this way also. So now let's look at this mesh thingy, because if you look at the cube, you see it has a mesh here and it has a cube mesh. Once you click on this icon here, you can select different meshes. So you can, for example, select the capsule mesh. You can see now suddenly the appearance of our item is very different. So it looks more like a capsule or even the sphere mesh. But of course, the cube mesh is going to be the correct one for the item that we have because well we want to use a cube here so that's what the mesh filter does for you it basically just says what's the appearance of the item that we're looking at so the mesh filter is the component that would cache and prepare it to be pre rendered in our view by well the mesh renderer that's why you can see all the render options only here while this one just has the mesh itself so here you see the mesh renderer options are all here and you can play around with those such as lighting you can change the lighting probes cast shadow you can turn off the shadow the shadow can go towards different directions and so forth so now let's actually change the cube a little bit because now we just played around with it but we didn't change anything what I would like to have is actually a scale of 15 for the x-axis because this will be our ground. So let's change the name of this cube. And by the way, you can click on it here until it allows you to change it or you can change it at the top right here. So once you change it to ground and press tab, you see the inspector will also change accordingly. So this will now be our ground. So now that we have the ground already and we have all the physics and renderers completely correctly, Let's actually duplicate this piece because we're going to position it just on the left hand side where we will change the angle by 90 degrees so that the block goes up, so to speak. So let's right click and then click duplicate. And now we have the ground twice, even though we can only see it once. But if we move one item, you can see that suddenly there are two items. So they are both there, but they are at the same position. So it looks like they're just one item. So let's change this one and Let's call this one left wall. And now let's change its values up a little bit. So here 
I'm going to change the rotation of it, which means I'm going to change the Z rotation by 90. So now you see we have a cross, but that's not what I wanted. I want it to be here on the left-hand side. So at the position of seven, for example, and then I want to drag it up so that it's just on top of our other item. So here I'm going to use Y is eight. And now duplicate the left wall, or you can copy and paste the left wall by pressing Control C and Control V. And let's rename this, let's call this one, right wall and let's change the value and actually let me see all right so now this one will be the right wall so i moved around to being on the side of my camera so you see here this is the direction my camera is going to look at it so now it makes sense to move the left wall that we had first over to the left hand side so here the position should be minus seven for the left wall, for the X coordinate, the Y coordinate should be eight. The scale is 15 and the Z rotation is 90 degrees. For the right wall, you can see the same values except for the X coordinate, which is at plus seven. Now, finally, let's duplicate the ground and make it the ceiling. So you can press duplicate here, right click duplicate, and now position it at the top. So therefore you can just position it on top of it right here which means it will be at 16 for the Y coordinate because the center point is 15. So here our X scale for the right wall is 15, even though it's turned around. So you have different options, of course, here for your walls, because on one hand, changing a block that has an X scale of 15 and a rotation of 90 is going to create this block that goes all the way up. On the other hand, if you had the Z position, or a Z coordinate of zero. So now I'm at the right wall, for example, of zero, the X coordinate is of one and the Y coordinate of 15, you would receive the same result. Okay, so both of those are going to give you the same result. So either you just duplicate as we have done and rotate, or you can of course do use the different scales here. So the coordinates here for your scale, X, Y, and Z coordinates. So now let's change the ground, by the way. Let's change it to ceiling, like so. So this one, the second ground, will be our ceiling at the top. All right, now inside of the assets folder, let's create a new folder, which I'm going to call materials. Because what you want to make sure is that your assets are cleanly structured, because otherwise it will be difficult to find your items and know where the materials are or where your other game objects are and so forth. So inside of materials, inside of this folder, I'm going to create a new material and I'm going to call this one border because it will hold the color of our borders. In my case, I'm going to use this bluish color here, something like that. I think that's going to be great. And then let's drag this border onto the individual items. So onto the walls, the ceiling and the ground. And of course you can select the same color or you can use any color you want. If you want to use the same color, you need to enter the R, G and B values that you see here and you will get the same color. And by the way, make sure to save your scene. So as long as you have the star here, make sure that you will save the scene. Otherwise you might lose your progress that you made. So always go here and click on save and then your scene will be saved. Okay. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to keep on building our codeless game. See you there. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you're one step closer to becoming a Unity game developer. And if you haven't liked the video yet, please do so now as well as subscribe. And also make sure to follow along in the playlist to become a real Unity developer. And if you want to fast track the whole development process of becoming a developer, then definitely check out our Unity Masterclass in which you're going to build a bunch of games and while doing so, learn everything you need to know about game development and well, have your first couple of projects under your belt. So check it out. The link is in the description below. You will get a huge discount and I hope to see you in the next video.